In today's video, we're checking out the Super HD System 3 Pro from Terra Onion. Team Canada. Hey, what's going on guys? CJR here back with another awesome gaming device that I'm super excited to highlight for you guys on this channel. This is the Super HD System 3 Pro from Terra Onion. Terra Onion are creators of the uh, the Mode, um, all sorts of other gaming devices, um, ODE, optical drive emulator um, for the Dreamcast. They've been creating some pretty epic products for some time now. Um, huge shout out once again to Stone Age Gamer for sending this device over for us to check out on the channel. Um, I've been dealing with Stone Age Gamer for the good part of 12 years now, I believe. Um, ever since I started this channel, I've been purchasing stuff from them. I get all my EverDrives from there. Um, yeah, just a super reputable source for amazing retro gaming tech such as this right here. So check out the links in the description below if you want more information on this or uh, want to grab one for yourself. So without further ado, what we're going to do here, so I guess I should quickly explain what this device is for. So. Um, build as the ultimate add-on to get the best from your PC engine. So what this device does is attaches to your PC engine or Turbo Graphics. Uh, disclaimer, when you click on that link, you'll see a disclaimer from uh, Stone Age Gamer and Terra Onion that um, while it does work with the Turbo Graphics, it's not recommended. There's some fitting, um, issues with fitting, fitting it on the back of this console, um, which we'll discuss further. It is in fact gonna go on this, so I'll show you guys um, some tips for getting it on uh, safely. It, it will fit, you just need to be extra careful. It's a tight fit, but it works. Um, but yeah, check out the disclaimer. Okay, so um, this device attaches to the back of your uh, PC Engine or Turbo Graphics and acts like a, um, essentially like an EverDrive. So you can run PC Engine Turbo Graphics ROMs off of it. But the th amazing thing about this device is you can also run um, Turbo CD games, PC Engine CD games. So it acts as, um, there's an FPA, FPGA chip in here that um, emulates actually owning the uh, Turbo PC Engine CD, which I've never owned before. I've never even played a lot of the games in the system. So fantastic way to do it without having to purchase the uh, uh, Turbo CD module. And it'll also play uh, super graphics games which, you know, there's only, I think, seven of them, but um, just kind of a cool add-on. So a great device for those of you that don't have a Turbo Duo or Turbo CD. I wouldn't even know what those are going for these days. I've never actually seen one in person, and I've always wanted to play Turbo CD games, and you know me, I love playing it on original hardware. Of course, there's other ways that you can do this. Um, I will mention that, you know, this is a premium device, and it comes at a premium price. Um, I think it goes for around $300, so... Um, while it is pricey, like I said, if you want to play this on original hardware, this is a great way to do it. Um, you know, and I don't own a single PC Engine CD game in my entire collection. I've never actually come across one. So it's just not a thing around here. And if it is, you're going to be spending typically hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, super excited to play Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Another great thing that you can do with these is play English translations of games that never made it to North America. Um, yeah, so super excited to have this device and check it out. So um, we're going to actually open it up, see what's inside, and I'll show you guys how it works. All right, so here we have the Super HD System 3 Pro. Um, you can see Super Graphics built in by Terra Onion. Let's check out the back of the box here. The ultimate add-on to get the best from your PC engine, featuring an easy-to-use menu supporting uh, CD, uh, .Q files, and Hue card .pce. This is important. Um, your CD uh, files need to be in a bin queue format or else they will not work. Um, Built-in system cards for uh, the CD-ROM, Super CD-ROM, and arcade CD-ROM games. Fantastic little bonus there. Play any CD game without needing to have the system card plugged in. Stores each game in backup RAM to micro SD, allowing for in infinite game saves. No need for additional storage devices. Instantaneous Hue card loads um, using onboard RAM memory, faster loading times than actual CD hardware, which is fantastic. Uh, In-game menu trigger for faster game switch. You can see this version actually has um, HDMI out. So there's a non-pro version, just a regular HD or Super SD system 3, I believe it's called. Um, 
but this one will do HDMI, as well as AV uh, multi-out with RGB output from digital uh, and uh, stereo audio. So this actually runs on a Genesis 2 AV cord if you've got one. MD 4A balanced audio, uh, super graphics game support, uh, yeah, physical switch and game trigger. Um, FPA loads FPA cores from uh, micro SD, so I think you can actually add different cores. I believe NES games, not something that I really want to do, but anyways, let's pop this guy open without destroying it. Okay, so real quick, you can uh, download the manual. Actually, I've already checked this out. Fantastic manual that they have for this. Walks you through all the steps that you need to get this set up. Um, like other devices I've highlighted, super easy. Just drag and drop files to the memory card. Um, you actually need to register your console. Uh, this will have a serial number on it. And you need to register it to get the firmware on the Terra, on Terra Onion website. So here's the unit itself. Uh, here we go. As you can see, blue, uh, which is interesting because I don't believe any of these systems are blue. In fact, um, pretty positive they're not. Uh, not a big deal. This is going to plug on the back of my turbo and it's going to go in my entertainment unit and you're never going to see it again. So uh, that's actually what I would recommend too, especially if you're using the Turbo TurboGrafx-16 units. Plugging it on and not ever taking it off uh, just because, like I said, the fit is tight. Okay, so we've got the RGB AV multi out here. You can see it's like the Genesis 2 style. HDMI, USB, and then uh, the reset button on the back. You know, not great. Not People aren't gonna be able to really access that, um, but it's there if you need it, you know, I guess. You can do a reset function with the controller itself too, so. And then I'm gonna cover my serial number. There's the pins that you need to connect to right here. And I think, while we're here, I am going to, in fact, do this. Okay, so uh, these pins need to go into here. And you need to do it very carefully because these can easily bend. Okay, so real quick off camera, what I did was, you, there's four screws here, just undo them and take this little top plate off. I've already inserted the uh, memory card as well. It can be super hard to get at it in this device, so do that when you take it off, if you're using this device, of course. Um, spring loaded, but it's super hard to get at. You need something to push it in there. Fingernail won't even get in, it's too deep. So that's one of the uh, minor faults of this thing. Okay, so I'm trying to show this on camera. I already did this once off camera and it did not go well. So redoing this again to show you guys the proper way to do it, okay? So what you need to do is make sure you have a good light source, which I do, and you wanna line it up Okay, like so, and you want to push from the bottom. So how do I show this? You want to push up on here uh, because what you need to do is push up to raise this piece up to align with the pins. And you'll know, as long as you're sliding the device in evenly, you should be fine. So let's see. Okay, you want to make sure you're pushing up and then firmly push down on your console to make sure that it's all the way in. And it's a tight fit, like I said. Um, just trying to look at the light here to check and make sure the pins. Yeah, so I've lined it up okay. Just uh, push on the bottom here to lift up this portion. You'll see when it's lined up. Um, and then slowly uh, press down with even force to get them in there uh, equally. Okay, and as I said, now that this is on, it's not ever coming off again. <laughs> I don't want to risk, you don't want to be pulling this thing off and on, so make sure that uh, when you put it on that, it, that's, that you're ready to put it on for good. Um, also, like, while you're tinkering, you could even just leave this off. You know, if you're messing around with your files and stuff like that, just leave it off until you have everything the way you want it, and then you're simply just gonna uh, put the piece back on top. And then you just want to insert your four screws. I would not recommend, yeah, th it's super easy to take the t cover off, so that's how I would do it. Um, truthfully, moment of truth here, 
uh, the first time I just try to jam it on there. And I bent three pins and one pin was actually kind of pushed in, which was not good. I was able to pull it out very gently with pliers and it seems to be fine, but uh, we'll find out when we turn this bad boy on. And that's it. It ain't pretty on here. It's a little awkward looking, but uh, nobody will see it because it'll be in your console most likely. And here is the previous turbo booster. You can see all this plastic on the side is just for show from what I remember. It's only a tiny little board in there. But yeah, now you'll have the option of uh, um, RGB AV multi-out for here, um, for your CRT TVs, and then um, HDMI. But you cannot uh, run them simultaneously. So, um, also, I guess while we're here, if you have an EverDrive inserted or a Hue card, uh, it will boot to this. It will give priority to this over this. So, obviously, you don't want this inserted. Um, no need for this anymore because uh, you can play all your games just like this. Essentially, you turn it on and it boots and you can pick from um, PC Engine, Turbo Graphics, uh, Turbo CD, or Super Graphics games. So. Anyways, let's head over to the computer and I'll show you guys real quick um, just where to get the files and stuff that you'll need to get this started. All right, so here we are over on the computer. Uh, you can see this is the manual. Really nice manual, explains things very well. Full color, uh, super straightforward. Um, you know, the process is not that complicated. Um, you know, it's simply downloading the firmware file. Once you get your unit, you'll see you have to actually create a, an account if you haven't done so with uh, Terra Onion um, and use your uh, unique um, code to uh, download the files. So you simply do that, download the firmware files, super easy process. Uh, then heading over to the uh, memory card, you can see all the files are just dropped on here. You need to make a uh, folder for your BIOS. You can find these somewhere on the internet, not too hard. And then I made individual folders for each system. That's kind of how I broke it down. This is the update file. That will be your firmware. You'll just go to the website, download this update. When you go plug in for the first time, your uh, console will prompt you to update. It takes a few seconds. Good to go. This is your database for the uh, images, which uh, I can't seem to get working quite yet. And some of these are just like save files and stuff, but just follow the manual, super easy process. You can see, just dump your files in here. Turbo CD, as I mentioned, need to be in the bin queue format. I tried some that weren't, and sometimes it seemed like it worked, but um, others it just wouldn't boot up. You'll get like a, um, a load error. Uh, uh, what is it? A, uh, um, a BIOS error, I believe. It just won't load it. So, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you guys. There's, uh, you know, more uh, in-depth tutorials online, but pretty simple process. Once you order your unit from uh, Stone Age Gamer, it came in like a week. Um, head over to the Terra Onion website, download the firmware files, drop them right under the root of memory card, make your BIOS folder, and then you, these are your games folders. And that's essentially it. Super simple process. And, uh, yeah, the documentation with Terra Onion is fantastic. They've got a support wiki here. Um, here's the Terra Onion site where you can uh, download the files, but, uh, yeah, I'll post links to uh, Stone Age Gamer in the description below where you can find all the information you need. All right. So a moment of truth. This is my old school <laughs> capture setup. I don't have my capture card these days, so this will have to do. Actually, it's been working quite well in previous videos. So, um, okay. I've gone through quite a bit of trial and error. So what I have hooked up right now is I actually have the unit hooked up through HDMI. So this is a CRT TV that actually has HDMI and it had an open port, it wasn't being used. So I have it connected through HDMI. Let's go ahead and turn it on. There's a few quirks, not quirks, but just things that I didn't know. Okay, so, um, you can actually add images, which is super cool. There's an image database, as I mentioned. Um, I figured out why it wasn't showing up. So it turns out that not only um, will you not see images through the composite connection, 
um, you actually can't play super graphics games. So I went through a whole bunch of trial and error. I thought I had messed up my pins. Basically, I could st I could play super graphics games, but there was graphical issues. So it was like a whole entire layer of graphics was missing. And then I read on uh, the wiki online that uh, super graphics games and cover art will only uh, work through HDMI, which is interesting. I think most people buying this are going to use HDMI anyways, but um, just something to uh, to note. Let's quickly take a look at some of the settings here. So you can see I'm in cover view. You can also go back to list view. Um, super snappy menu. You can see the, uh, the picture actually looks really good. You know what though? I was actually blown away at how good the composite was. The composite looked fantastic. This is better. It looks great with through HDMI on this TV. Um, through, I put it on my 4K TV and it is gorgeous on there. So there are some limitations. This is only running on, uh, go down to video options. I think 480, no, oh. Okay, so I'm loading a game. You can see a game loading here. Bravo, man. Uh, In-game reset is enabled. You just hold these two buttons, run and select for three seconds and you'll go back to the menu. Uh, okay, so we're in list view. We go to video options. So we're on 640 by 480. That is what makes sense for this TV, but it'll go up to 12 whatever by 720, 1280 by 720, 1080 by, yeah. I don't wanna switch it cause it's gonna throw this thing off, but um, yeah, these, you know, you know, those scan line options, you don't need it on this TV, but for your uh, big screen, um, leave smoothing off. In my opinion, it looks terrible. Keep it on sharp. Um, yeah, a bunch of scan line options and then options for the uh, analog connection too. Um, so let's look at some of the options here. See, we're in list mode. Let's switch back to cover view. Uh, boot to last game. You can set it to uh, boot to whatever game you were playing previously, and you can push the button combo to get to the menu like I just showed you. Uh, it wouldn't be bad if you're like playing, uh, you know, playing through an RPG and you're playing it like every day type thing, and just boot right to it. That might be uh, kind of cool. Uh, reverse um, the buttons essentially for the menu. Uh, reverses one and two. Uh, enable in-game trigger, that's the reset that I just showed you. Uh, skip CD, ROM, press uh, run. It just skips that opening screen, I believe. Seek time emulation, this will emulate um, the actual time that it would take for uh, reading discs. Apparently this will eliminate some audio glitches. There's a few audio hiccups here and there I've noticed um, because this thing is much faster than the um, Turbo CD itself. So it can cause syncing issues, I believe. Um, per per game backup RAM, that just creates a, um, a, a backup file for each game instead of, I guess, maybe one for everyone. I'm not quite sure on that. Uh, enable uh, arcade card. This will just enable arcade cards for games that use it. Just leave that on. Uh, enable hue card dumper. So this device will actually allow you to copy your hue cards to the system so you can back up your own games that you actually own. Um, select CD system cards. So this is where you would put your BIOS files. This CD-ROM system 3.01 seems to work for everything. I think I switched it for to try something out, but it's, I usually have it on that one. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, alternate CD-ROM program. Not quite sure what that one is, to be honest. Video options we've done. Um, some different themes here. It's nice to switch it up once in a while. PC Engine Core Graphics. Scan folder, that's how you scan your images. You actually have to go into a folder, another quirk, and then scan for that folder, just so you know when you're adding your images. And this will give you all your information for, uh, there's my serial number, which has already been registered, so. Yeah, it's cool. You can just access the manual from right here. Scan it with your phone. Um, okay, so let's launch a game. Let's launch a super graphics game and see what happens here. Uh, this is, um, let's go with the Darius Alpha. Yeah, Darius, let's go Alpha. So when I played this before, um, not connected through HDMI, it worked. I would get to the screen and stuff and I would go to play the game but the enemies would not show up on screen. There would be no enemies. They'd shoot at me, 
but I couldn't see the actual enemy. So it was like it was missing a layer of uh, graphics. But as you can see, works great. Apparently this is an extremely rare game that was only like a mail-in or something like that. Push and hold, select and run. This will take you back to the menu. And it, I love how it shows your last game. That's super cool. The menu's simple, but you know, elegant. Um, so yeah, that's the super graphics. Not a whole lot of games for the super graphics. So it's not, I mean, there are a couple of good ones here. Ghouls and Ghosts. Um, was it Daimakai Maru? Mura? Daimakai Mura? Um, 1941 Counterattack. Anyways, let's quickly launch a Turo CD game here. And let's go to. Uh, where's Castlevania? Pass it. Castlevania Rondo of Blood. This is an English translation. That's why it didn't show the. Uh, have the cover there. You can see how fast it loads. So many Konami games on. Yeah, Turbo Graphics, PC Engine. So this is the English translation. I don't remember playing this, so I'm not sure if the original game had Japanese, where that German just was, but the German's pretty freaking cool. I think it'll run a demo but uh yeah this is a game one of those instances where very hard to get a copy of this if you can track one down if you have a pc engine um it's <laughs> extremely expensive uh i think it was available in other places so there are other places where you can find this game the thing i've noticed with uh turbo cd games um you know graphically they're better but it's really the sound the sound is fantastic you get that cd audio I'm having a great time with the CD-based systems between the Saturn. Um, I've been playing a lot of Sega CD with the Mega EverDrive Pro, which will be featured in an upcoming video. But the uh, audio is awesome. Great soundtrack on this one. Okay, so we'll back out. And then I'll run just a regular uh, turbo. Whoa, what happened there? Oh, right, no cover. Um, a regular turbo game. Uh, we'll go with Air Zonk. This is a game that I actually own. Um, I should mention that Hue Cards, if I didn't mention already, Hue Cards will work and your uh, EverDrive. I don't, not that you would need it now, but it'll work. It'll uh, give priority to whatever's in the Hue Card slot. I got this game at a local game shop. The guy, I was there when the guy traded it in. And I think I paid 20 bucks. Not complete though. Fun game. Maybe you'd probably call this a cute em up. My shmup skills are getting a little better lately. I feel like I've been playing a lot of shmups on uh, Saturn, Sega CD. Ugh, missed all those power ups. I'm still on Sam. Say I'm great at them, but yeah, so I mean, turbo games look and play great on uh, both HDMI and composite. I was really surprised at how good it looked on uh, composite. All right, so that's a quick look at the Super HD System 3 Pro. I think I covered everything. Showed you guys each game, I think I covered all the options. Sometimes I like to actually go just go back to list view just because it's so quick I can find things a little bit quicker. It's much better for scrolling. Super snappy menu. Apparently that's because of the uh, FPGA chip. All right. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video on the Super HD System 3 Pro. As I said, check out the links in the, in the description below to learn more about this product blown away by uh, the capabilities of, of what this device does and uh, super excited to finally be able to play some of the uh, Turbo CD lineup. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and until the next episode.